Systems thinking is very important to everything we do in the world. If you think about it, all of our important problems are in a systems environment, whether it's politics, climate change, the economy. Those things are all systems. And that's why thinking about things as systems is so important. Systems are an interesting problem, and they should occupy, I think, more of our intellectual activity. Systems provide uh, for chaos. They're complex. What that means is, let's say I'm a policymaker and I'm going to do something to the tax rate on lobsters, okay? And you'd think, well, that has an effect on the lobster market, but it also has effects elsewhere. It affects the other kinds of food that people eat, and it affects employment, which affects the amount of money in the economy. So systems thinking is really uh, thinking about all the, the ways that the real world is interactive to what, what we do. My name is Edward Castronova. I'm a professor of media at Indiana University. I study markets and systems in social media generally, but especially video games. At one point, my career was really in the tank. And so I gave up and I started playing video games. And then it occurred to me, kind of as a joke, what if I wrote like a serious economics paper about these video games that I'm playing? So I went ahead and wrote the paper, you know, I start collecting numbers. And as I collected them, I was like, those are big numbers. <laughs> what is going on here? This paper turned into something that was actually pretty serious. It just took off. Most economics papers, they just sit there. They get like seven downloads in 20 years. And this had like 20,000 in a year. There were a lot of people outside of econ who were interested in this. I'm talking about like government agencies, philosophers, and uh, especially the news media. I started to get a ton of interviews. As we go through the world, we spend most of our time actually interacting with systems. As a game economist, I realized early that's what game economies are. And so that early paper was mostly about quantifying it. For example, if you pump a bunch of money into a video game economy, inflation happens, just like it does in the real world. So by the same logic that economies and video games really teach us about systems in the real world, machinations now allows us to look at systems. So if you think of a system as a series of parts moving in loops, well, the machinations tool lets you make a blueprint of that. You could, for example, create one pool that says carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and another pool that says Amazon rainforest, and another pool that says Chinese CO2 production, and another one that says US CO2 production, and have all the arrows that you need moving things around, as well as something that counts. How much CO2 do we have to get to in order to, in order to survive what's coming? As soon as I realized what machinations was, I got all these ideas for what you could do with it. And I ended up making a simulation of all of the economies in Europe before World War I and how during World War I, they had each one of them to manage things like, how many people do we have? How many women should we put in factories? What is the effect of the submarine warfare? This was a simulation of World War I that had nothing to do with the actual battlefield but everything about the interactive systems of European commerce and production. When you're looking at something complicated, you can't get your mind around it. And you know if you press this button, something's going to happen, but you have no idea what. And what you need is a, a bird's eye overview of all the parts and how they interact with one another. And that's what this tool provides. When I teach using machinations, what I like to do is start with just a simple game economy. And of course I tell them, this isn't just a game economy, this is a simple real world economy as well. Our economy works basically the same way. I show them how an influx of currency causes inflation. Once you use the tool, you can understand the effects of things in a way that you can't if, if you just don't have an overview of the system. You, know, you imagine a young person growing up thinking that the world is, is a simple input-output mechanism. I do something and I get a result. And it turns out the world isn't going to look like that to them. It's pretty clear that the future is going to be systems-driven. 
as AI comes in, it's going to be interacting with itself and interacting with us. The interaction of different parts of the world is only going to increase as technology increases. So my advice to a young person is to do everything they can to understand why it is that if they do this one thing over here, it turns into this strange feedback over there. So if nothing else, if you can think about the world in terms of systems and not simple input-output interactions, you'll be able to say to yourself, it's very strange what's happening now, but everything around me that seems so confusing is actually part of an interactive system that has some logic to it.